keeping me safe and sound and when i fall you've tied a rope to me you're blessing me every day i was down with an illusion like a sparrow with broken wings but now i shine with your reflection on me i'm getting back up on my feet Straight Talk with Sally, it's podcast batching day. Hey, everybody out there on the live stream, let us know where you're joining us from today. We will be recording two episodes. We have two guests lined up for you today. To kick us off, we will be talking to the amazing Katie Simpson, followed by the mindset guru herself, Miss Jackie Ashley. Now, if you're joining us for the very first time, then you don't want to miss any of our podcast batching days, then make sure you chat to this little chicken. This is Dr. Sparkle. She will hook you up with reminders for podcast batching day. So just shoot her a message and she'll make sure you're in the know. Also, if you want to know more about what we do and make sure you don't miss anything, subscribe, like all the things here over on YouTube, or you can go to this link here and it'll show you all the upcoming live events. But seriously... We're here today to do podcast batching day. This is what we do every four weeks or so. We'll bring on a few guests and we will, uh, we've got some guests coming, or people tuning in from Dallas. Hello from Dallas. Um, If you're streaming from Facebook, have a look up in the text somewhere. There's a little link you can click on and that little link will actually let me see who your beautiful face is on Facebook as well. So you don't just come up with the little Facebook user thing, right? So this is super fun. We do this because uh, we have a podcast called Straight Talk with Sally. And every other week we drop 
an interview, but every other week we do a longer teaching lesson. And then we also do two quick tip episodes every single week as well. So we're over a hundred plus episodes now over on Straight Talk with Sally. So just on all of the good, you know, podcast places, you will find the actual podcast, but what better way to make content than batch it and do it live because we're going to be able to do so many more things with it. So let me introduce you to today's guest. Her name is Katie Simpson. I met her through the Ecamm fam. I love Ecamm. As you can see, all this sweet stuff right here is Ecamm. But today's guest is passionate about helping heart-centered business women to really break through the overwhelm and exhaustion and blow up their business through quick, easy and professional live videos and podcasting. So she's got lots of gems to drop for you today. But before we get into today's topic, which is about three easy ways to increase your visibility using vod- the vodcast method, I want you to say hi, everybody, to our guest, Katie Simpson. Hey, Katie. Hi. How are hi, you? Hi, yeah, I'm good. Thank you, Sally. Thank you so much for having me on. I absolutely adore what you do and I Aww. love your podcast and all your videos and your uh, enthusiasm and colourfulness and but you know, <laughs> your incredible business sense and coaching. So I'm Aww. really thrilled to um have this opportunity so thank you and hi everybody hi well thank you for coming on because I know uh you have some really valuable content for our viewers and listeners today so but before we get into that good stuff can you share with us a little bit about your journey and and your sort of background and what got you to where you are today yeah, so I could go on for hours. <laughs> I'm not a very good short storyteller, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I um, totally I do. To get... I totally do. My team tell me off all the time when they go to cre- create a reel or a story. They can can you do that in 15 seconds? I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to go off on one. Oh, and this happened. Oh, did you know that? And then yeah. forget what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so um, I'm in the UK, as everyone can tell. And um, I have had a really interesting journey. Um, I have been a vocal coach for 20 odd years um, and, you know, got a master's degree and things in that. And I've absolutely adored doing that. And the thing that sort of happened was my health struggles. And that has led me but it can be a blessing, can't it? These things, you know, they're a blessing in disguise. Led me to do doing what I'm doing now um, via a few different interesting <laughs> pathways. Um, so my heart has always been really to um, help women to sort of lift up their heads with confidence and be able to speak them you know their heart be able to speak their worth and be able to now for the last few years I've been able to help them to do that in in live video and podcasting and um yeah be be out there you know be their wonderful selves out out there in the world rather than hiding so that's that's what I love doing now interesting that you know the health struggles and things like that are I raise my hand, same here, right? Mm -hmm. We had health struggles and, and, you know, some loss and grief and things like that that really shifted the way in which I wanted to live my life. And um, really interesting to hear you say that. Was that a a bigger defining factor in, you know, choosing to do what you do today was, you know, it's usually the struggles, right, that then Mm -hmm. kind of put us on the path to fulfilment, enlightenment, all the things yeah yeah it's it's quite amazing isn't it so yeah nobody wants to go through um trauma and whatever nobody would want you to go through that but you can use it and 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 often yeah we do grow through it don't we and and we realize what's important and what what we really want to do and things like that so yeah 
a blessing yeah. in disguise. Yeah, but, but some people would see those things as – some people would, like, lean into the bad times rather than looking for the blessings. So, you know, I think that really shows a lot about your character as well, the fact that, you know, you you, you talk about it as a blessing rather than kind of leaning into it, like, I've had this thing and, you know, or I've been through this trauma. And I see a lot of that with people who, you know, within our niche want to – uh, talk about it constantly but it, then it holds them back if they're not looking at it as a blessing <laughs> or a learning because sometimes just things are out of our control right mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. but we're here to talk about positive stuff today which we we're still talking about positive things but I love that you're into video and vlogging and and you guys couldn't hear but Katie was in the background singing along before, so you can tell she loves to sing. But today's topic, we're talking all about the vlogcast method and three easy ways to increase your visibility using this method. But first off, can you explain to people what is actual vodcasting and why do you believe that it's important to help you create a great business? Yeah, yeah. So... Most people have no idea what what on earth vodcasting is and it can sound a bit sort of terrifying and maybe, you know, oh, I'm not going to get into that, whatever that is. That sounds very confusing and complicated and difficult. But um, it is video on demand podcasting. So it basically means that people can watch your podcast. So like just what we're doing, exactly what we're doing now, we are vodcasting. And I just think it is just such a brilliant way to do a podcast because podcasting is, is great and it's it's a wonderful thing in itself. But if you can just add video as well to it, and some people don't add live video, they might do a pre-recorded like a Zoom or something and just put that up on YouTube or some people just get like a static stack it yeah can't speak St- <laughs> static image and they put that on um, YouTube and so they're they're getting into the Google algorithm you know the, the people can search on on YouTube and find things I think quite a lot more easily than they can do still with podcasting um, so even if you just bung a static image on an, on top of your audio, that I think that's better than nothing. It's not great, but but anyway, we can use wonderful equipment like you've got, and uh, it doesn't have to be terrifying. And what actually is brilliant for is it helps people get over that overwhelm um, in lots of ways. You know, you can just do a whole load of content at once and then you press stop and you've down got your download of of the recordings and stuff and you can do what you want with it it's just done then you know your main piece of content creation and um and you do batching which is like you know taking it one step further which is a brilliant idea yeah, that's it. The amount of content we can get from one video is crazy. I know Stephanie Lou always talks about 92 pieces of content from one video. And, you know, it's so valuable that if you just put your face out there and literally I don't look at myself on camera at all. And I used to put a post-it note over my face when I used to go live just on my phone. So I just look at the little dot because I don't want to see that I've got a wanky lip that kind of pops up here. And, <laughs> and after my eye surgery, I get a lazy eye every now and then. Oh. You know, I'm judging We're me so more. Hard. Yeah. yeah. We're so hard on ourselves. We're so horrible to ourselves. Yeah. 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 And, but it's like a muscle, I think. Once you build it, yeah. you get stronger and, and it's not so awkward and uncomfortable after a little while. And um, so, yeah, the amount of content we can get from one video, from blogs and, uh, you know, even snippets and audiograms and the amount of content that our girls will make just from this one interview will be awesome as well. Now, like I have all the things. Well, maybe not as much as some others like, you know, Doc Rock and, you know, <laughs> 
<laughs> I look around, I want, I want all these other backlights and pretty things, but I got a lot of tech and a lot of gadgets to do this. But what about those that don't? What sort of things can you recommend to them that don't have all of the gear? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I going back to, um, you know, why vodcasting is 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 a great idea if you you know you don't have much money and you're, you're not really into tech and everything it i would really recommend that you have put your toe in the water and and just try it with a few things so there there are lots of bits and pieces that you could get you know when people talk about podcasting itself they talk about you know you've got to record it with something um if there's a remote guest there, you've got to get a, a program that that can, you know, dial in like Skype or Zoom or whatever. And then you've got to download that into some program that you can just get the audio from it. And then you need to be able to edit it, that. Um, and if you can, you know, edit out really bad bits or or the top and tail or whatever you want to do and then you can add like your intro music and your outro music and maybe you want to say something in the middle as well you can you need something to be able to do that and then you really need something to improve the sound quality for podcasting so we could call it mastering the sound so you could spend a whole load of money and get loads of different technology to do all that but I use um, a program that that does all of that, um, and it's called Alitu. Um, so if you can use programs that sort of do the all, all the different things, they're sort of multi-purpose, um, and they do things for you as well. They sort of automatically do things for you. Then then that's really good. Um, so for the recording with, um, if you've got a remote guest, you can use Zoom, but the quality isn't that great. Um, so both Sally and I both absolutely adore Ecamm Live. And if you're watching us, then you'll be able to see her fantastic, beautiful, sparkly, colorful <laughs> branding, um, which is something else that I, I could talk about in a minute. Um, that that just really adds that extra dimension. And it's, it's quite user-friendly to use. It does take practice, but it's very user friendly and you will automatically get the recordings afterwards, the audio recordings and the video recordings. And so you can easily do what you want with those. So it's like a multi-purpose platform. And today Ecamm have just added in um, that you can send it straight to another program that I think Sally as well adores called Descript. Um, and Descript is another thing, and you could actually um, almost do your whole podcast. You just have to get a hosting platform, and you could use, if you're on Kajabi, you could use that. Um, Descript is so brilliant. It does so many things. You can write your emails by just capturing the words because it, it, it writes down what you say. It transcribes what you say. You can take little clips out as videos. You can make audiograms. It's just magical descriptors. So I yeah, know. there's like three platforms that, yeah. I, that can do everything. Well, I knew there was an update and I hadn't actually been in yet to see what all the, you know, awesome things are. And wow, we can now send it straight to Descript. So I'm like... I'm like thinking my, my team's sitting over here and on the, like, here, look at them all. They're all beautiful. Look at them. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm like, okay, so we can now go and stream and go straight to Descript because normally I'm finished the episode and I'm like uploading and shifting them to Google Drive for the team to then do all the things in Descript. So, whoa, yes. And Ecamm is yeah. Very like it might look a little fancy, but it's really not that hard. And they mm. run trainings all the time on how to use it. Like every week, there's a live training on how to use eCam and also uh, how to make pretty graphics as well through Anna and Fulgence. They teach that as well uh, through Building Blocks and eCam. So 
Being that they're a live streaming platform, they're constantly live streaming how to use the software. And last year I went all in. Like I had had Ecamm for probably over 12 months before I actually used it. And last mm-hmm. year was like, I'm going to learn how to use this sucker. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um, and, and just the professionalism and, you know, and the other software you were talking about, about uh, fixing your audio and all of those. It, it is nice, mm. I, I believe, too, to have a good quality audio. Mm. But even still, like even if you just want to rip off the Band-Aid and do, do it, you could do it with your AirPods, right? You could start somewhere. When I'm in Sydney and I don't have uh, the mic gear with me when I go into state travelling, I record straight into my laptop. I should actually take a portable mic, which is on my list. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But, you know, we just recognise when we're away that sound quality is not as good, but imperfect action is also better than no action at all. So all the tools, all the things, there's so many gadgets and gadgets out there to create a podcast, but just do Mm. it right yeah. it's so yeah. valuable it is a slow burn though right a podcast is not something that you start and oh everyone's going to come running to you and it is that consistency of showing up yeah. all the time yeah i think that's where if you go live um uh, in you know and then repurpose that as your your podcast i think that is just where you get that instant interaction with people you know even if it's your mum or whatever you've told her oh please come and watch um you can see people commenting and sort of cheering you on as it were or sending little love hearts or whatever if you just do a podcast you don't get that um interaction it's very difficult still for people to write a review you know it's it's well it's not difficult it's just unusual that people will go to the lengths of writing a review Correct. and you yeah. might not even see the review um so it can feel like a right slog for a long time um and building that sense of community if you're just literally doing your podcast and sort of posting about it um so i think people can also I feel with live video because you can see people you build that know like and trust factor quicker not saying that podcasting isn't very very special in its own right it really is because there's something very intimate about audio and people will put you in their ears and they'll listen to you like they'll be real fans and they'll listen to your whole episode and they'll feel that they really know you really really well you don't get that so much with live video because people flit in and out and you don't get that close connection yeah I've fallen asleep with some of my favorite podcasters many times as soon as my husband starts snoring I'll usually grab the airpods stick in my favorite podcast episode and fall asleep to them so there is that intimate factor even taking them into the shower with me right (laughs) that's intimate (laughs) I will you uh, like to talk about the vodcast method um so Tell me, what is the vodcast method and three ways to use this to increase your visibility? Yeah, so I've developed a a method um, to help people get all the bits and pieces together and go and do it. But go and do it being their best you. So my website is called Be Your Best You. I'm, I'm all for you know, being your best. So if that means that you start with your AirPods and you just, you know, do it with your laptop or whatever with Zoom and whatever it is, I'd really encourage you to just go for it. And then um, I think it was James Clear in Atomic Habits. I think that in there he said um, you can just get 1% better each time. Just work on that principle of just trying something else each time so yeah i encourage people to just 
get and do it, but then to be their best them. So the vodcast method helps you to be a pro at it. So it's all the letters of vodcast pro and all the things that help you to learn how to do it and how to really, really stand out and feel fantastic when you're doing it, look fantastic, sound fantastic, and do it in a way that it's just it's quick and easy as a really good workflow to it. It doesn't take you ages. It's not overwhelming. It's just all set up. You know how to do it and you just do it and you've got all your content out there. You're, you're building your business, um, with this little workflow. So the V stands for voice. <laughs> Hardly anyone talks about voice these days for podcasting and um, live video. I don't think so anyway. And I think it's so important. Loads of people hate their voices. I hated my voice before I started working on it and uh, having lessons on it and stuff a long time ago. And we, we listen to ourselves and we just think, oh, I sound so blah, blah, blah. Or, oh, my accent <laughs> or, oh, I'm fumbling with my words or whatever it is we we always hate the way we look and sound it's so sad <laughs> so um you can really really use your voice and amp it up for uh, your vodcast for your sales calls for a any place that you use your voice you can really build it up you you're not stuck with one voice you always have to sound like this or like this or whatever it is and so um one of the things i do with people is warm up their voices do you want to try Should yeah do let's, a, do let's do it let's do it come on okay. so <laughs> little exercise so yeah it's really really good we all get tense and nervous when we're going live or podcasting and that's good to a certain extent but we also need to not get stuck in a really high pitch because we're so nervous and we can't breathe and all that. We really <laughs> don't want that. Yeah, we want to sound relaxed and exhilarated and all those things. Okay, so we're going to start with our lips going like this, like a horse. And then add your voice. My team's looking over at me going, what is she doing? Because I can't hear a thing that's going on on this oh. podcast right now because you're in my ears. <laughs> Very good. Very good. So that's actually a brilliant warm up because it gets your voice, your sound interesting, your sound alive and enthusiastic and warm and engaging. If you go high and low with your voice. <laughs> so when you speak, you can go high and low and then um to really amp up your um voice and get ready for it i love doing some um exclamations so we're not shouting okay. we're just throwing our voice with some excellent explanations okay so like this i'll come away from the microphone a bit <laughs> so we go woohoo okay Woohoo! I was yeah! out. Yeah! We went Very out good. dancing um, on the weekend and I loved the song they were playing and I went woohoo and they go, we've got a woohoo girl in the audience. <laughs> yeah, you stay a woohoo girl. Why not? I love it. You say, well, well, it's actually a warm up. Yeah, there I'm you go. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, some warm ups can can really, really help help with that. And it helps with your confidence. It gets the oxygen going, you know, it gets you excited about what you're going to be talking about. So I think voice is just so, so important. So that's what I start with. And then we talk about your your organization. So you've got to be pretty organized if you're having guests in. If you're not, you can just wing it if you want to. <laughs> Um, but if you're having guests in, you need to schedule it and plan it and work out a way of doing that. And then we can talk about your visual design. So your backdrop, the way you look, you know, so just making you be you on camera, making you pop on camera, stand out from the rest. So that can just be to do with what you're wearing and what you've got 
behind you and you can do simple things it can be to do with having a, your logo in the corner if you want or your name or what you're talking about underneath whatever or the beautiful ecamm as you can see here <laughs> if you're watching so yeah design uh, can really really help you stand out like a pro and then your confidence your camera confidence um getting practicing looking into the camera speaking like it, you're speaking to your best friend not being intimidated by by this sort of i think it's like a cyclops you know that was it a greek god or something which had one eye so looking into that black camera lens it's like it's really <laughs> off-putting but you know getting practicing getting your camera confidence skills getting your vocal confidence skills and getting your tech confidence skills as well um can really help and then your audience if you're going live you need to think about your audience who's there and saying you know hi so and so lovely to see you we've got some people here actually which is lovely thank you for being here um and growing your community building your community and using the live video is how i like to do vodcasting and and your podcasting to build and grow a community and you can do that on loads of different platforms all at the same time like sally is wonderfully doing with us right now um yeah so that's and then we've got software so learning how to use your software your recording editing and uploading that to your podcast and then your tech so your lights your camera your microphone you don't have to spend a whole load of money you can get a really good microphone for about in the uk about 65 pounds or so um you need to know what you're getting don't just get any random one because some of them are pretty rubbish microphone uh, camera you don't have to spend a load for that in fact laptop cameras are pretty good these days so that's your tech and then to become pro you need to practice the p for pro is practice it so practice your skills just try something simple first and then try and get a little bit better each time repurposing it into 97 bits of content if you want or slightly less it's actually really really easy to do when you use some of the tools that we've been talking about it doesn't take very long at all i actually um when i do my sh live show to podcast it takes me about an hour and a half from actually doing my half an hour show to uploading that onto podcast and at the same time I've also got the text in front of me. So at the same time, I can make an audiogram, I can make a few posts, um, and I've got the text ready for a blog if I want to do that. So it really is great. And the last thing, O, is outsourcing, growing your amazing business because you're doing so well because you're increasing your visibility. Woohoo! <laughs> I love that. All those letters and you've come up with an amazing, I love acronyms and ways in which to remember things. I wrote them all down. So um, I will probably, you know, I will definitely quote you if I share that again, if that's okay with you. But I thought that yeah. was a really great way. So I wrote voice. So we're looking at uh, Vodcasting Pro. So voice, organisation, design, confidence, which is for camera, voice and tech, audience, yeah. Um, so consider your audience software and tech and then practice and repurpose and outsource. Yeah. And that is such, yay, see, look, I take <laughs> notes. Selfishly, I come and run these interviews as well to learn myself. Always got my student hat on. Um, so that's a really great way for people to start to think about how they want to start putting their podcast together. And you don't need to make it super complicated um, you start with just the basics and slowly grow upon that. And mm. it is a slow burn podcasting, right? But it's about consistency. It's about showing up all the time so that people don't forget who you are. I always talk about like these seven different stages of a customer's life cycle. 
and you've got lead generation and um, which is stage one. You've got um, orientation, indoctrination, stage two, and nurture, which is stage three. And I really feel that podcasts are sitting in the nurture phase where we get to continuously nurture those people who have discovered us. And then one day when they get to know and like us enough, they can make an informed decision if whatever it is we do is a good fit for them. And by you being there constantly, when that thing is that they're looking for help with, finally they're at that point to say, yes, you want to stay front of mind and tip of tongue. And podcasting, vlog, vodcasting is definitely the way to stay front of mind and tip of tongue. Thank you, Katie. That was like some really great tips. And for anyone out there watching, I would love for you, if you've got any questions or anything as well, please please feel free to drop them in the chat. We do actually have uh, a couple of questions coming in from viewers out there. First off, Mar is our beautiful beautiful organized part so the one of the o's the organizational you would have experienced what it's like to be a guest on our show when uh we do a lot of background work but it's grown from just sending an email and someone saying yes and jumping online to like a whole process and system um over the time but we've also got a question here from reba Reba wants to know, uh, what us women who are uh, have a lower range voice, how do we make it more appealing while speaking without wearing our voices out by keeping it in a high range? Yeah, so, so Reba, that's a great question. That really is. So I want you to be your best you. I don't want you to think that you have to speak in a particular range. So to find your range, just do some gentle humming. So start on um, a comfortable um, note, as it were, sound, tone, um, which could be for you, it might be low, that's too low for me. But um, if that's comfortable, that's fine. And then just slide up and down a little bit and start just speaking something in a really comfortable way um, with allowing your voice to go up and down. So your some people tend to speak a bit too low. They sort of force their voice down. Uh, we had a prime minister in the UK who was called Margaret Thatcher in the 80s, long time ago. And she was taught because she was a female prime minister to literally speak down here, which wasn't natural for her, but she felt that she ought to speak here because it made her sound more important. <laughs> so I don't recommend that anyone tries to, she must have had terrible throat problems, um, tries to sound like anyone else. I, I recommend that they try and sound like themselves because then you'll get that lovely resonance, that lovely richness in your voice if you're sounding like you. But play with your voice to find out where it is and say say things, say say your um, your little business line, you know, things that you say often. Um, say it and just try different things and and try and sound excited and try and sound relaxed and all those things when we are going live we need to amp up our um energy if if we're speaking to um our husband or whoever you know family we will tend to speak in a much more relaxed sort of way like this we can't really do that on live video so so practice amping up your energy a little bit to to speak on live video and then maybe practice um as if you were speaking to a whole audience you're giving a, a speech um, and you've got to then amp it up even more so don't change your voice just amp up you amp up your energy amp up your real you but to find your range just hum up and down really gentle way and you'll find it that's really important be the best you so mm. everyone has a different tone a different pitch level i can get really really deep 
and really, really high. Uh, they never know where to put me when, when I'm singing in a group because I could do all ends of the spectrum. But oh, wow. there's, the, there's the middle ground, right? There's the happy space where it doesn't feel tight, it doesn't feel strained, and then people get to know you. And if you're going live for an hour or more, it's really draining to mm. not be you. And eventually mm. people will see through that. I had a, a coach one day that saw me on a live and she reached out and she says, Sally, you need to take a good hard look at yourself. And I'm like, why? Why? What have I done? Oh my goodness. I thought, you know, I'd done something really bad on my life. She goes, you're too bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I was like, Okay, so you're telling me not to be me. I'm like this around the dinner table driving my family crazy. I dance, I sing, I carry on like the Joker all the time. Well, most yeah. of the time. And, and you're telling me not to be me. So if you're not crazy like this and me, don't be me, right? Be no. you, be you. We've got some amazing people inside our community that are very softly spoken, very calming, and it actually suits them so well, right? They don't have that huge craziness that, you know, for some reason, this is just me. And their their industry that they're in, it really suits them as well. So, yeah. And I think Rick, this would be Reba here saying thank you. Great question, though, okay. because people mm -hmm. do feel sometimes that, oh, I need all this training to talk. I think it's just, and you said it before, well, talk to people or talk to the camera like it's your best friend, like sitting mm -hmm. across the table from each other, having mm -hmm. a, a conversation and, you know, you don't look at yourself when you're talking to your best friend. You're busy mm -hmm. looking at them. So if you need to... Put your little best friend picture up near your camera and look at that instead of yourself. <laughs> mm, definitely. So yeah, you, yeah. Yeah. So you, you can do it, Reba. You can do it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, she's a rock star, our Reba. She uh, created an accidental funnel inside of our community doing one of our free trainings and made some money, which was so cool. And uh, just sort of, you know, same. I did an accidental funnel at the beginning of last year. <laughs> <laughs> um okay we've got rewriting question let's have a look here uh my question so it makes sense look what about us women who oh sh it's just her thank you katie for the great oh. answer <laughs> i didn't um got it. i yeah we read it we got it right i type i part dyslexic and i type crazy i also stutter type where i'll type the same word twice i'm very good at that too when i'm typing fast <laughs> <gasps> oh, Katie, thank you so much for today. I mean, I've had a blast and uh, really enjoyed having you on and also for staying up late because I know the UK is not the best time zone for us here in Australia. <laughs> the only time we get UK clients that really uh, do well here inside the Sparkle world are those who like late nights. So... <laughs> If they're thinking about joining our community, I always ask, are you a nighttime person? Yes. Because you have to be. We had one lady who would sit up, her partner would go off. I think he was uh, like an ambulance driver or something like that where he had overnight shifts. So she would come in when he headed to work, sit up with us all night and go to bed at like three or four in the morning when we're logging out for the day. So it worked well for her. Uh, but, yeah, the UK and Australia, that, that time difference, we're like literally almost 12 hours behind each oh, other, which yeah. Yeah, makes yeah. it really hard. But thank <laughs> you for, for putting in the time and the effort for getting up for us. I really oh. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Enjoyed if it. people, oh, actually, hang on. Before I do anything, uh, I know Mara is going to kill me if I don't do the question. <laughs> uh, we actually have, I forgot, we have sparkle questions for you. So this is off tangent now into find a little bit more about Ooh. you. Um, so when you were younger, uh, what did you actually want to be? And how has that shown up for you today? <laughs> So, yeah, great question. Um, I wanted to be a gymnast. I wanted to be a nurse. <laughs> but 
But then when I was slightly older and I was given a plastic guitar like a little kiddies guitar you know with plastic strings and I absolutely loved that I wanted to be a musician and uh, (laughs) yeah so so the the music thing is just so part of my being still and it it always will be um and you know it it's a big part of what I do to help people if sound like a broken record, be them best, their best selves, you know, help, help people get the confidence to, to show up, um, and, you know, to improve work on their voices, but being them, being them and, you know, have, having that confidence to, perform in inverted commas, not being somebody else, but being the authentic self. Um, so yeah, that, that's, yeah. that's where I, I love I came music. From and came to that. Yeah. I, I, I love music. I can close my eyes and, and hear all the instruments in a song. So that's why the music's always got to be really loud so I can feel it. My husband and my daughter are always <laughs> like, why does it always have to be so loud? When I finally get my offers finished, that I'm going to have to have noise cancellating like in internal walls <laughs> so that I can pump it loud and not drive the neighbours crazy. But That's so cool oh. how you got a little guitar with the little strings. Yes. Oh, um, yeah. Do you play many instruments? Well, you might just be able to see if you're um, on the live. I've actually got a piano here. Hi, um, nice. So my first instrument is my voice, but my second is violin. So wow. um, I've taught violin for quite a long time as well. And yeah, I accompany on my piano and it's actually such a relaxing thing to do, just playing the piano I, I make it up as I go along uh, yeah, and singing, that. singing along, you know, it's just, it's such, if, if you, I'd encourage anyone to sort of learn the guitar or learn a bit, just basic things on the piano, you know, just get a YouTube video and of some song that you like and just find a basic um, accompaniment. Um, and it's just such a lovely thing to do. Yeah, and there's really a is. YouTube video out there to teach you how to play anything these days. Like my daughter um, mm. has literally just taken my guitar and she's practising just from YouTube videos, teaching herself. I mean, with these talons right now, I haven't played for a while. <laughs> <laughs> my fingernails are so long. But I'm a campfire player, mm. right, because I love to sing. Lovely. So I just play the chords. I don't need all the fancy yeah. stuff. I just play the chords so I've yeah. got some background music. And that's how I yeah. made money to buy food when I was younger. Take the guitar, stand on the oh, street, wow. play until wow. I had enough money in the box to go and buy some food. <laughs> we've we've got that in common then because I, I used to play sort of Scottish fiddle music on yeah. the violin, obviously. And I made a lot of money. I had a few celebrities giving me quite a lot of money. Wow. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was really so good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. For me, it was I was really young and just moved out of home. It was like to go and buy food and alcohol so I could party for the rest of the night. <laughs> oh, um, a, no. a second sparkle question here for you. Helps, I've lost my mouse. Is oh, this one I love this one, Ma. What are three books? Because I'm always on the lookout for good books. What are three books that have been a big inspiration to you? Yeah, so business wise, um, I've read Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy loads of times and I've listened to it on audiobooks tons of times as well and I just dip into it every so often because it's not that I'm brilliant in the morning at getting a difficult thing done at all I'm quite the opposite to that but it's just there's so he's he's got a lot of wisdom and you know it's um productivity it's just really inspiring and and helpful So I love that one. That's quite a golden oldie. And one that I mentioned earlier, James Clear, Atomic Habits. I think everybody loves that one. Um, Yeah, again, it's that sort of productivity and encouragement, your mindset. You've got Jackie on soon. I'm sure she's going to be talking about some of that. Um, So I love that one. And actually, like Katie Fawkes was on your 
um, podcast recently as well, and she talked about super fans by Pat Flynn. Yeah, and I love that one as well because it's yeah. quite short and and it's. It's really good because at the end of each chapter, he's got um, now go and do this and just some simple things for you to go and do. It's not just like you can read it and then forget the book, which I tend to do. Have I read that page? Um. (laughs) Are you more of a reader or a listener? How do you like to consume your books? I'm a watcher and a listener. Okay. So So you look at the book while listening to the book or...? I tend to watch um, videos, you know, so that's not going to be um, audio books. You can't tend to listen to audio books, but my main way of consuming content is mm-hmm. by watching people. And if I'm not watching them, my phone's on the side or I'm in the bath and I'm just, you know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm I'm a watcher listener. Yeah, yeah, me too. I find it really hard to read and actually retain when I'm reading. I have to, like my husband, he'll get out a a manual that's, you know, five inches thick and just read it and take it all in. Wow. Um, And I can't do that. I'm like, where's the video or where's the the audio? I literally used to read my homework notes onto a cassette tape and listen to it back so I could yeah. remember for tests yeah. because if I had to reread notes I could never I would yeah. never do any any good we're the same like that as well yeah. I did I did that and listened over and over and over to French or whatever it was yep. and just learned it like that yeah yeah it was the only way for me to take it in so it's finding your mm. way of consuming content and I guess that's what's really mm. good about when we were talking about videos and and all the things you can take those and turn them into the written word and audiograms and you know just mm. the the audio as well so that people can consume that content in the way that they best learn yeah, exactly. as well yeah but- that's just one thing that I I wanted to bring up is that um, you can attract by doing video and, and podcasting, you can attract, you know, people who learn in different ways and people who are very busy, very successful um, entrepreneurs, if that's what you're doing for your video and podcast, you can attract them by having the um, audio version so that they can listen when they're out at the gym or cooking the dinner or whatever they're doing in their spare little moments of time um but also you can attract you know people who who don't want to listen to the podcast or who have got more time and want to watch a video and you know so you really are attracting a whole load of people from the places where they want to consume their content yeah so it, it opens you up for a much wider audience base. Yeah, definitely. Okay, my final question for you, and you've got to complete this sentence or say and complete the sentence. Hi, I'm Katie Simpson and I sparkle because... Hi, I'm Katie Simpson and I sparkle because I love having fun. I've got to have fun. Woohoo! Yeah. You love that. <laughs> That's one of my mottos. Business should be fun, right? Yeah. I, I have fun every day. I wake up and pinch myself that I get to do this and we make money and we put food on the table for our staff and, and all the good things. Thank you so much, Katie. Now, for anyone who wants to find out more about you, where can they hit you up? Where do you like to hang out on all the socials? <laughs> Yeah, so I'm on Facebook most of the time. That's my home place. Um, I am on Instagram as well, but, you know, I'm trying to love Instagram. It's taking me years to try hard to love Instagram. So I'm not on there as much. You'll find me on Facebook more. Yeah, my as my daughter says, that's where the old people are. And I'm like, yeah, that's me, baby. <laughs> Yeah, we're yeah. trying Instagram a lot more this year as well. But yeah, it's a it's a it's a hard slog. At the end of the day, they're only vanity metrics, you know. The ones that really like you will find a way to consume your content wherever you are. So uh one of our people here is saying it was a great episode and better than they expected. That is awesome because Katie's amazing. Um so thank you everyone for joining us. We still have the amazing Jackie Ashley who will be joining 
us in our next one. Uh, it's about an hour and five minutes from now. Jackie will be in. So she is going to be talking about the fear of success. And this has come up a lot because we recently did a three-day workshop within our community talking about like what money do you want to earn in the next 10 years and three years and the next one year and so many people were really struggling to set their number and we first thought oh you know that's a lot of money mindset stuff but then the further we drilled down into it it became a fear of success so I'm really excited to bring Jackie on to chat with her about that so keep an eye out if you're in Australia it is at let me check my calendar because <laughs> Ma looks after all of this. Hang on a second. It's a, I think it's an hour and 10 from now, uh, if I am not mistaken. Yes. So it is at 11 o'clock and um, – but um, Melbourne time, but Google, smart people Google, you'll figure it out. But if you're live with us right now, it is in an hour and four minutes. So come back and join me as I talk with Jackie. But don't forget to hit us up, like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our lives. But I want to really thank our fabulous guest, Katie, for joining us for our first episode for Podcast Batching Day. Thank you, Katie. It was an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. And we're going to dance on out because we love a little dance party. So let's say goodbye to everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you.